I've been talking about it. should probably with like start and then we'll pause and turn off the camera and then we'll go back to whatever. <laughs> so apparently doing this for the TV people. Are you good? <laughs> this is not going to take that Okay. Um, I would make this a lot more casual. Hey, I'm Mike Demo. Yay. I'm Mike. Yeah. Hi. This is two sides of the same coin. Oh wait, I'm on the wrong. Last time I gave this talk, it was 500 people. So, I mean, you should feel very privileged about the ratio. I love right? small class sizes. There you go. I'm not you buying know. the deal at the end. <laughs> I'm uh, an evangelist for Bold Grid. I'm a treasurer of Open Source Matters. This is where I ask, who here has heard of Open Source Matters? But everyone here has heard of Open Source Matters, right? Anyone here not have heard of Open Source Matters? Widget, I have no idea what you're talking about. Really? Seriously. Oh, wow. Okay, so the Open Source, <laughs> Matter, Open Source Matters is the foundation of the Joomla project. And then this is the time that the whole audience goes, oh. <laughs> and you hear the audible <laughs> jazz. What's the Joomla? Room. It's just the CMS thing. Um, but anyway, that's where you hear the audible gas, and I'm like, and I make my joke, yeah, I know, how did he get in here? Kick him out, blah, blah, blah. Um, basically, I love open source. Uh, I'm a Huffington Post contributor. I've been a video game lover, former Disney cast member, and the further south I get, the less important that sounds. I understand that. Do you want to ask about that last, that second um, to last one? Disney cast member, how that? <laughs> yeah, I literally just made the joke that the... The further south I get, the less important that is. Um, the less impressive it sounds, but you give that in New York or the Midwest, they love you. Um, and I'm also a uh, dog daddy. Um, what do I do for Bold Grid? What do I do? Why I do it? Go to work camps. Um, you know, work camp EU, um, Missouri. I will go to colleges, talk about Bold Grid, teach open source to students. And I do it because I love open source. So, speaking of open source, um, and why I like WordPress, I love our community. I love how welcoming and inclusive our community is, and how everyone's so nice and respectful <laughs> to our community. But all kidding, aside, <laughs> all kidding aside, I really do love how inclusive WordPress is, and I love how we try to welcome all people. Um, this talk is licensed WTPFL version two. If you don't know what it is, you can look it up. Um, because of Code of Conduct, I can't say the full name. Um, but for real, this talk is licensed as that. Um, all of kidding aside, so you can do whatever you want to do with that license restrictions. Um, last time I gave this talk, um, I got some good things. There was an inspiring talk from MP Mike uh, on a broader view of supporting all open source projects, not just our favorites, WordCamp Phoenix. That was October 2017, and it was liked a grand total of five times. I know, it was quite viral. But, that day also happened to be International Internet Day. And I took this tweet from Ellen DeGeneres that day. It was Happy National Cat Day, International Internet Day. Because I actually gave this talk before this WordCamp Phoenix. But when I saw it was International Internet Day and National Cat Day, I kind of changed the whole purpose of it. Um, so with that, I look at a quote from Jessica Dunbar from Concrete 5. Uh, Concrete 5 is another CMS, similar to WordPress. Um, she said, I'm not dating a CMS, I'm in an open source relationship. She said this at the Merge conference. See, something good came out of it. Um, and all, Sorry, kid I it. all kidding aside, this is what really strikes home, because it's how I identify with. I self-identify as in an open source relationship. I think too many times we define ourselves as WordPress people, Joomla people, Drupal people, DNN people, whatever the case is. And I think that's what is hurting the future of open source is our tribalism. So what is open source? Everyone looks at open source, you know, this way. It's craft, it's small, it's niche, it's hippie, it's for us and everything along those lines. But what does that really uh, mean? Everyone thinks open source, you know, is this like small little homebrewed thing. But open source really just means one thing. It's free as in speech. That's all it is. It doesn't mean it's no cost. It doesn't mean any of that. It just means you have the freedom, free as in speech, not free as in beer. That's what open source is. We've all heard that analogy, um, especially in the Drupal world. They really love beer, so that's when it came out of that. It's the first time I heard it. But you need to be able to have free speech. And that means you can take the code, repository, extend it, fork it, do what you want with it, per the terms of your license. And that's the most powerful thing. Because we love open source. We love open source. Open source is amazing, but we only love our open source. You know how many times I've been at a WordCamp? In fact, it's happened since I've been working at Bold Grid. 
I've been told, oh, you don't belong here. Because I happened to have volunteered for the Jumo Project, I have been told that on more than one occasion at a word camp. Which is silly because, you know, Matt Bielenweg was a keynote speaker at the Jumo World Conference. The projects aren't fighting. And that's the whole point of this talk, is the projects aren't fighting. We create these little silos of brand loyalty and saying F you to the other projects because it makes us feel good. It makes us feel like we made the right choice. We want to be on the winning team. But that's hurting open source, and I'm going to show, the, show why. Because everyone thinks WordPress is the best. Yay, five stars, hearts on my eyes. I love WordPress, and I love WordPress too. WordPress is great. Um, and then people look at other things like Joomla, eh, a little less so, it's okay, I guess. Um, Drupal, eh, DNN, you know, whatever the case is. <laughs> but everyone kind of looks at all these different things, but here's the secret. Here's the secret about open source. Is that WordPress is just people. It's just people. We, too many times, like to say WordPress is the best. And we get really defensive online when people say things about Joomla, Drupal, or whatever. There's so many times when I say, hey, I also am on the board of Joomla, because I'm the treasurer of Joomla, that the first thing people say to me is, well, I use Joomla once, and I don't use it again for this reason, this reason, this reason. WordPress is better because of this. It's a different tool. It's a tool. People can use whatever tool they want. We have this weird loyalty. And have you noticed in the open source community, there's a weird brand loyalty to Apple, which is the pinnacle of closed source? <laughs> and it's serious. Like, seriously, how many times do you see a Linux distribution on your... Um, this can be a really quick count, I'm sure. You don't have to I don't know, this is, this is really hard. And what's interesting is it's almost all the same demographics. All my demographic numbers are even easy, too. So. <laughs> it's like you killed yourself in this one. This is <laughs> Um, and it's funny, really weird. You, don't, you hardly see anyone with a Linux distribution. I mean, yeah, I'm using Windows, but you know, it is what it is. But tools are tools. I like Linux. Yeah, yeah. on Linux. Yeah. Well, <laughs> nobody uses a Linux distro as their presentation. Don't be triggered. How today. many open source I conferences? Do. Well, that's great. I, it doesn't happen very often. Um, um, they're all MacBooks. You're right. Yeah, they're all MacBooks, and there's like this weird loyalty to that. It's a heckler. But I'm not against the Linux. Um, I use Linux too. I'm just stating we don't see it a lot in the open source world. Open source people are really tied up in brand loyalty in a way that is unhealthy, in a way that's hurting our projects. Because tools are tools. Use WordPress, great, use WordPress. Want to use Drupal, great, use Drupal. Want to use Joomla, great, use Joomla. And there's different use cases. Sometimes you might need to work in Magento. I had a client, we built them a Magento site, because guess what, they needed a very specific thing that was built into Magento that would have cost six figures to build into WooCommerce. It worked for them, because they had a very specific tie-in with a call center and all this other stuff. Um, there are times WordPress makes a lot of sense, there are times Drupal makes sense, and there are CMSs I guarantee you've never even heard of that I'm going to talk about today that have very specific use cases that are really the reasons they exist, because WordPress is just people, we're just volunteers. We are people all pulling the rope in the same direction because we love WordPress. We come from different races, religions, creeds, view, political viewpoints, and we can still come together at an event like WordCamps and be nice to each other. Imagine that, that there are people in this building that have religious disagreements with people's lifestyles, marriages, um, religions, and all this stuff, but we come together to WordPress because we think that WordPress is important and we want to help the project. It means something to It does. And that's amazing, because you know what? We're never gonna make everyone agree about every viewpoint. That's impossible, we're people. But we can all agree that WordPress is important to us and we wanna help the project. The project comes first. Because WordPress is just people. Um, Jonathan Mann wrote a song um, that talked about this. We'll play that real quick. Ready, you gonna, you gonna do it, Vincent? I'll do it. Come on, man, do it. What do you do? It's gonna do the walking. Behind every line of code, behind every name you know, behind all the drama and all the success, the hard work, the failures, and all the rest, it's just me. You're ready for Jesus class, isn't it? Yeah, 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 WordPress is people. 
just people Many moons ago Started out as just two Now it overflow Just look around you Hey, hey you Hey you, do the WordPress wiggle Hey, a wapoo Wapoo, do the WordPress wiggle Hey, hey you Hey you, do the WordPress wiggle Hey, wapoo I like that song, but it seems like have a weird, quick ending. Um, doesn't really go down. Oh, look, brought to you by the people of Gravity View. That's new since the last time I showed this. Um So that's written by John. That might be a violation. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> which, uh, but guess what? Jumla is just people. It's just people. Jumla is people. And they also have a song, and no, I'm not going to play it, um, <laughs> called I Love You Jumwa, which is to the tune of Hallelujah, um, by Soren um, Beck Jensen. And so it goes on. Jubilous people. They also have a song, the Jubal Song Lion at Jubalcon San Francisco by all those people. Um, because guess what? Open source is people first, and that is what's most important. But who had their song first? Open source is people. To answer your question, the first song is the open source song, the free software song by Richard yes. Stallman. Because open source is, it's what is changing the world. We have so much ability to push the internet in an amazing direction, and we are killing ourselves due to tribalism. We are killing ourselves because WordCamp, sorry, WordPress should be first. WordPress needs to be number one. For example, when WordPress just hit 30% of CMS market share, uh, 30% of the internet, I should say, um, a couple weeks ago, whatever, everybody was freaking out. Well, I can't wait till we hit 60%, blah, 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 and all that this. That. You know? That's the wrong attitude to have. First of all, every open source CMS is losing market share. To the SaaS solutions, Wix, Weebly, Squarespace, it's happening. And you know what's hurting it? Our stupid fighting amongst ourselves that doesn't even exist except for low-level people in the community and the top contributors that want to feel like you're part of a winning team. People don't want to feel they make the wrong choice. And it's not just WordPress. This happens. It happens in every open source project. I go to the Joomla World Conference. Every conversation is, how do we beat WordPress? How do we stop WordPress? That's not the conversation to have. The conversation is to look at why you exist, look at your mission statement, and to push the envelope forward for that mission statement. The mission statement of WordPress is to democratize publishing. The project is doing everything it can, and the people leading the project are making the best decisions to push that mission statement forward. <coughs> Drupal has a different mission statement. Drupal is focused on the enterprise, and they are unapologetic about it. If I was going to ask you, um, who think for the Second most popular open source CMS of it. Who would say Drupal is the second most popular open source CMS? Okay. You guys happen to know the stats, but normally most people, about 80% of the room, think Drupal is that. Who thinks Joomla is the second most popular? Who thinks it's something else? What do you guys think? Uh, Wikimedia. Wikimedia. Uh, we call it a CMS? <laughs> I don't yeah, know you could. it's a fundamentally different pattern than CMS. But I could be wrong, I don't know. Yeah. What were you going to say? But something else? No idea. It's, okay. else. <laughs> um, it's actually Joomla. Joomla is the second most popular open source CMS. Try to shoot from this angle. No, so <laughs> 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 Right? There are so many people here. <laughs> I yeah, this is the shot. <laughs> um, um, and Drupal is the third most popular CMS, but it doesn't mean Drupal, angles, yeah. it doesn't mean Drupal is better or worse than it's like one of those Facebook photos, right? <laughs> than anyone, any of these other projects, because the software comes first. And that's what gives me to things like the CMS Garden. Who has here heard of the CMS Garden? No, great. The CMS Garden is a non-profit. I'm very much in a WordPress bubble right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any of these things. Yeah, you're in the WordPress bubble. <laughs> and that's a bad thing. WordPress is great, but you know what one of the best things you can do is to go to other projects events. Meet people. 
learn what they're doing. Go to a JavaScript event. Go to a PHP event. Go to a jQuery event. Go to a Drupal event. Go to something else. Because we're in our little echo chamber, and that's not good for anybody. Echo chambers for any project isn't helping anybody. And guess what? These other CMSs, they make decisions that affect us. For example, did you know that Joomla was the first open source CMS to mandate PHP 7? They mandate it. Did that have repercussions on their user base and backwards compatibility and all this? Yes, it definitely did. But they drew a line in the sand and said, we believe PHP 7 for security is important. And that is fundamentally correct. It's a good thing to say. Does WordPress make a different decision because of its user base? Yes, definitely. But other CMSs are starting to follow suit. And if we're getting host to notice that, hey, Joomla's doing this, maybe we should get PHP 7 support because they mandated it when it wasn't even available in a lot of shared host environments. And that pushes the industry forward. We all use so many different pieces of open source that we don't even respect to realize it. WordPress is a LAMP stack. Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. All open source projects. We wouldn't exist if it wasn't for open source. WordPress itself is a fork. It's a fork. Mm -hmm. We didn't, it wasn't created from scratch. You know, Matt didn't have an epiphany and create it in seven days like God. <laughs> Matt's not God. <laughs> Matt. A volunteer. Just like there are lots of other people in the project that are just volunteering. A broke one. It's a fork. Code is coming and it's free speech. And that's, we need to respect that and we need to look at other projects. So CMS Garden is a nonprofit that what they do is they go to enterprise level events around the world and they have booths at, at, at conferences that cost like twenty or $40,000. And they're at big enterprise level events and they say, hey, don't go to a closed source solution, go to an open source solution. And they have reps from all the major open source projects and they talk about it. Hey, oh, you're doing education, go check this out. You're doing this, go talk to these guys. And they're there all pulling the open source rope in the same direction. They're not there, it's all of these reps are volunteers from all of these different projects. And guess what, they don't kill each other. Because they care about open source above their projects. Is it okay to love WordPress? Is it okay to be pro WordPress? Yes, immensely. I love WordPress too. I love Joomla as well, because that was my first open source project I contributed in, well, it was Mambo at the time, but we were from there. So what are some of the projects? Alchemy CMS. Contago. I'm gonna mispronounce a lot of these, by the way. <laughs> that one. <laughs> Django CMS. That's the RAM? Yes. These are all actively contributing wow. projects. Drupal. No. Django. Easy. Joomla. And yes, the legal name is with the bang, by the way. It's the whole thing. Um, open CMS. Papaya. Fun to say. Which is the most delicious CMS. It is. It's a very delicious CMS. Plone. Red Axa. Scientific CMS. Scientific CMS was created by some of the same people that were involved with MIT. It's a CMS meant for scientific data sharing. It's a very specific use case. But it's one of the best examples of open source. They saw a need and they filled it and they released it out into the community. If you have a very specific scientific study that needs data shared in a very specific way in a very specific format, you could use WordPress, but why? Scientific CMS exists. Use the best tool for the job. And I guarantee it, if you work in other CMSs, just to play around it, you will learn things that will affect your WordPress work. And guess what? Every single talk, at most every single Joomla day, WordCamp, um, DrupalCon, 95% of the talks are agnostic. You could replace Drupal at a DrupalCon with WordPress when the speaker's talking, and most every principle applies. Very few times are you digging into the actual code, unless it's a developer conference, and showing Drupal or WordPress or Joomla specific things. Yeah, they might talk about different plugins, like it's a marketing talk, oh, I recommend these plugins for WordPress, but you can still get something out of it. But you know what you'll meet? You'll meet amazing people. There are amazing people in other projects, I hate to tell you. They're not all in WordPress. Now, like in like WordPress as well, we they have some non-amazing people mm -hmm. that are 
the same tribalism. DrupalCon starts on Monday in Nashville. You know what they're doing? They have a CMS festival. They've invited every open source CMS to exhibit at DrupalCon. That's pretty cool. Joomla's sending a couple former board members there. And other CMSs will be there as well. Because they realize that open source is more important than being team WordPress. Table three, in Baco. Um, WordPress, they're also a member. Funny story about CMS Garden is you have to pay to be a, be a member of CMS Garden. I was about to say. And, and what? I said there's a couple I didn't see in there, I was going to ask about that. You have to be a paid member. It's $1,000 per CMS a year to cover their expenses. Um, I once asked Matt during the Joomla World Conference about the CMS Garden. He had no idea they were even involved. That was back then. It was pretty new at the time. But even back then, they were able, to, the foundation was able to apply and say, hey, we want to be a part of this, pay the thousand bucks, and support it. Now, CMS Garden's a lot larger now, and uh, different projects, some of the larger ones, have more resources to give to, the, to their nonprofit work. But it's a registered nonprofit. Heck, even WordPress is not even a, doesn't even have a registered nonprofit for the main group anymore. They still have the nonprofit for some of the other activities, but WordCamp's not even run under the nonprofit anymore for tax reasons. It's a registered nonprofit out of Germany. Um, but look at these stats. These are a few months, months old. WordPress makes up 65% of all business websites. This doesn't include e-commerce. But look, Joomla makes up one out of every 10 business websites. It's a lot more than I bet you thought it was. It's something that's worth paying attention to. Even if you need to migrate away from it, knowing the code base is good, and you can take their ideas and the coding principles and what works and doesn't work for them. You know what the, one of the biggest lessons that WordPress, I personally think, is learned from Joomla? Not to break backwards compatibility. For better or for worse, WordPress has kept their backwards compatibility promise. And that's been a mainstay of WordPress, for the most part. You know what Joomla is most known for? The jump from 1.5 to 2.5, 2.5 to 3, and how you have to rebuild all these sites, and Every all the app. customers are upset, and all that stuff. Now, does, does WordPress have to make different technical decisions because of their backwards compatibility? Yes. But is it better or worse? They're just different. Use the tool you want to use. But look, look what's next. Wix, Squarespace, we believe. Of all business websites on the internet, out of the top five, only two of them are open source. Then you have Drupal, then you have closed source, typo three, then you have 101, and then another open source one. Over half this list is closed source. The SaaS solutions are killing open source. And these numbers get worse year after year. I'll tell you why. Wix, Weebly, and Squarespace are cool. Seriously. If you put off your developer hat for a minute and you've never touched CMS in your life, you can build some pretty cool stuff with no experience. That's who they're going for. But people don't own it. They don't own their content in most cases. Yes, some of them have different licenses. You can export and do things like that, but you don't own it. That's why we are bold grid. We try to bring that same experience, but you're inside of WordPress, and there's no short codes. We don't lock you away. Um, you know, you own your content. But being able to do what you want with your stuff is pretty impressive. <coughs> you look at the block market share. Oh, look, WordPress makes up 81% of all blocks. That's not surprising. But look what's number two, Blogger. Still makes up 15.4% of all blocks. That's not open source. They haven't made the Blogger open source yet. And they probably never will. For those of you who think that blogger, these are just outdated blogs, I went to the Snap conference last year. It was a DIY marketing conference. That was a conference to be an attendee. You had to make, make six figures on your blog to be an attendee. I was sold out. We, took, we registered people. We took information out of booth. 68% of all attendees use blogger to this day because it works for them. But you know what they don't do? They don't own their content. Then you got uh, Tumblr, closed source. Wix, Squarespace, Weebly, closed source, closed source, closed source. 
Joomla, which makes a 0.2% of all blogs. You know what Joomla is not really not good at? You know what Joomla is one of the worst things at? It's not a blogging platform. Can you use it for that? Sure. Should you? No. It's not what it's meant for. And this whole antithesis of this is basically, we need to focus on open source. We need to look at open source first. We need to think about how do we make WordPress stronger by supporting open source. If we support other open source projects, it's only gonna help WordPress. WordPress has no wish to kill these other open source CMSs. You know who the risk for all of us are? The SaaS solutions, the closed source. Wix, Weekly, Squarespace, and these other closed source solutions are what is risking all of our jobs. It's not Gutenberg. It's not page builders. It's none of that. It's these do-it-yourself solutions that nobody owns their content. And people don't realize they're not owning their content. And we're getting into this space that open source at a whole is growing in some ways. Microsoft. Microsoft gives more money to the Linux Foundation than any other organization. The Microsoft has some of one of the largest open source um, contribution teams out there. One and of the lead did, developers of UJS works at uh, exactly. Yeah, works at uh, so, Microsoft. Yeah. That's her job. Yeah. They do, they support contributors and all that stuff, and that's great. So we've seen a push towards open source, but in the web space world, we have seen users move away from it. And a lot of that's happening because a lot of users are scared of making the right decision. Well, it's also very complex right now. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of options out there, and a lot of people are so, you know, they log into WordPress. We've done a study with thousands and thousands of web users. 60% of people that buy WordPress hosting for the first time, shared hosting, this is an average worldwide, cancel their account within 30 days. Six is zero. They don't even set it up. Yeah, they don't even edit the homepage because they log in and they are confused why. And you know the reason? We've surveyed thousands of people. Um, the reason, this is the story we hear 95% of the time. Oh, I have a buddy, cousin, nephew, neighbor that knows about the web. I wanted to build a website for my bakery or whatever, and I asked him for help. And they all say, oh, use WordPress, it's easy. That's what they hear nine times out of 10, because that person uses WordPress and for them it's easy. Is WordPress easy? It's a CMS. It's a CMS. Any CMS is a learning curve. Are some CMSs have a lower learning curve than others? Sure. Concrete 5, their mission statement is to be the CMS your client will use. Now, from the developer point of view, you might not agree it's the most ease of use, but, but their goal is for the client's user, the client's client, to be able to use it. And that's their focus. And they're doing some amazing things. They actually sat at, um, I was talking to Jessica, she's a Concrete 5 evangelist. She was watching my bold grid demo, and she's like, you're using Concrete 5. I'm like, no, I'm not. She's like, well, we had some of these features three years ago. Yeah. And they're open source, and we took some of those ideas. Gutenberg is taking some of these ideas of page builders, the UI UX, and pushing them forward. Whatever we can do to make WordPress better and the open source community better is good for everybody. It's like Gutenberg can be open source just the same. So exactly. Well, it'll be part of core. It'll be part of core. It's like, but that doesn't keep Joomla from importing their own version of editor. Heck, Tiny MCE, our current editor that we all know and love, is in so many CMSs, and rightly so. It's a really cool WYSIWYG editor, especially at the time. It was the best one out there. And they do a lot of development help in WordPress and Joomla and things like that. Um, and I think we forget where we come from. I think we want to be part of a winning team so much that we forget why we're here. So basically, think about open source. I, I, don't, I don't like to hear comments like, oh, Drupal sucks for this reason. Or, you know, Magento's bad for this reason. I get it, it's not your cup of tea. But we can all agree that there's a use case for all these tools. It might not be your chosen tool set, and that's okay. I'm not saying you need to spend your time and learn inside and out every CMS under the sun. Use the best tool for you, but don't discount the other ones and badmouth them because they're all doing the same thing. All these places, most of these open source projects are volunteers. Very few companies uh, have, um, you know, associate or companies that are helping them. You know, WordPress, we say that, you know, automatic. 
um, you know, is the company WordPress. They're a separate company. Do they pay in and help contributors? Yeah, but so do other companies like Bluehost, GoDaddy, lots of them. Lots of plugin developers also work in the project. That's great. But these other projects are doing the same thing. And we can use our place, being the most popular open source CMS, and push the internet forward. Or we can stay in our echo chamber and not change the world as much as I think we have the power to. So that basically, um, that's my acoustic unplugged edition of this <laughs> talk. So questions, comments, death threats? <laughs> Do you think that Joomla's number is so high because they've been around for so long? I mean, they still only make up about 2.9 to 3% of the internet as a whole. So it's still a large jump when you compare against um, WordPress, but they have been around since the Mambo days. If you count Mambo and then the fork, they've been around longer than WordPress. Um, uh, but. You know, I can't say exactly why. One of Joomla's biggest strengths is governments. Um, for the longest time, some whole countries mandated Joomla use. So that was, they have a lot of governmental sites. But of business websites, which does not include governmental sites, they still have 9%, which is nothing to sneeze at. It's not bad market share. And no, they, there's a thousand options. Yeah. And you know what? It's, I get it. You know, Joomla's not necessarily the, Everyone's a cup of tea, and that's okay. That's fine, use WordPress. I use WordPress for a lot of my client projects too. Um, but we should at least kind of respect what that team's doing because they have their roadmap and they have their goals and they're trying to push technology forward. And, you know, we all steal from each other. All these open source CMSs borrow from each other because it's open source, you're allowed to do that. Sometimes they take the actual code, sometimes they just take the ideas. One of the best events I've ever been to is, um, the uh, um, CLS, Community Leadership Summit, in Texas, of all of these open source board members and leaders all came together just talking about open source as a whole. What are the issues that open source communities have? And you know what one of the biggest issues is? What they call founder syndrome. That the people that were around from the beginning get put up on a pedestal, and sometimes, they become toxic to the community. I am not stating at all that's the case in our community, but you can see why, you know, how something goes from small to large, it, you know, people don't have that leadership skill and how do they, you know, a lot of smaller projects, they die out because they allow bigotry and stuff to last in their community because their founders happen to have those beliefs. That's dangerous. Drupal just went through that two a year and a half, two years ago. So much so that it made national news. Time Magazine wrote about that. Um, Devon? Yeah. You're talking about a lot of other CMSs, and um, you kind of did it cover other open source frameworks. Yeah. Um, the same thing. So React, uh, Vue, Laravel, um, Laravel yeah, yep. Rails. Laravel. Um, and so for me, I'm kind of thinking about, I don't use Drupal or Joomla, even though I, I'm sure they're perfectly fine CMSs, because sure. if I need a CMS, like, yeah, I kind of, in, but I use Drupal, or not, I use Laravel, I use yeah. Vue, I use React, and so that's... That was great, until they killed it. Um, and I, you know, if I had time, would probably order Rails. Yeah, yeah. And I kind of wonder about that approach, because, like, again, like, if I need a content management system, I'm going to use the one that I spent the last... Sure. Ten years learning. You know what I mean? But also, I don't build websites a lot, so it's like the one website I am building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But I wonder if... Um, Maybe that's a blinder that I have. I mean, I've definitely helped a bunch of people Squarespace up their website. Because yeah, yeah. I mean, I did mention, I'm like, I said go to other open source communities. I encourage any open source involvement. You know, JavaScript, PHP, Laravel, Ruby. Um, I talk a lot about CMSs in this uh, talk simply because at a WordCamp, that's most people's, that's most end users and integrators' exposure to the open source world is the CMS. Yeah. Uh, the, the developers aside, um, you know, the people that are just, I call them integrators, that are using the tool sets, maybe doing a little bit of CSS and things like that to build a front end website. But there are, yeah, there's some amazing projects out there. Um, Laravel's one of them. And 
you can do a lot with it. Like I already talking today, like, oh, I can just spin up a Laravel web app and do this and this and this instead of doing it as a plugin because that shouldn't be in a plugin for these reasons. That's the type of thinking that I think is gonna push the web forward. Being in this little echo chamber that's saying WordPress, WordPress, WordPress is a little bit dangerous. Well, I still remember the days back when everybody wanted to integrate things like Magento and WordPress together where the, oh, there was yeah. no barrier except for the, the technical barrier. I mean, there was a company in Michigan called Core PHP. They make products where you can bind Drupal and Joomla together, WordPress and Joomla together. And you can have a full WordPress install inside of a Joomla site, and you can use any WordPress widget in any Joomla module position. Why do we want to do that? I've actually used it once. Um, it was years and years and years ago. For um, right? I mean, you want to have the, the blog functionality? Um, you could use it for the blog, but I think it, it's kind of it's a lot of weight because you're loading two whole CMSs in your site. Um, there was a widget. The client wanted. A, uh, we were a Joomla shop, and we only did Joomla then. We didn't do WordPress. Um, it was one of the things, whatever. You know, could, that also wasn't good that that was one of the things that the owner wanted to stick with. Um, and they needed a very specific plugin that for Century 21 only offered to Century 21 agents in WordPress. So we used that plugin, used that extension, had to, uh, had to optimize the hell out of it um, because it's a lot of weight um, to be able to pull that, those widgets into Joomla module positions. And the cool thing about that is that extension that Core PHP did is it would automatically it would build like a fake theme WordPress that would pick up the CSS styles from the master Joomla template. And it's cool stuff like that because it's open source that you're allowed to do that. And even though it might not be practical, it's fun that people play around with that. So do you think the drumbeat of like always following like what percentage we're at is a symptom of tribalism or do you think that contributes to more tribalism? I think it's both. Um, I think it does contribute to tribalism if we're so focused on the numbers that it, it makes it seem like we're trying to be competitive to the other CMSs. I've been in Joomla board meetings where I'm giving examples of what the WordPress community does and I've been yelled at, scolded, well, let's not talk about WordPress. F you. WordPress is doing some good things. They're doing some great things. We should look at it and mimic it. Um, on the other hand, uh, so it's a symptom of, but I think it also, it, it's an echo chamber. If we're so focused on the number, I think that it sends the message that the other CMSs are bad. And I don't believe Matt believes that. I believe he's proud of what WordPress has done, but there's a reason why he's spoken at other conferences, including the Joomla World Conference. There's a reason why WordCamp Miami goes out of its way to invite other projects there. And I spoke to Jason Nickerson. He was the original um, uh, open source speaker ever to speak at WordCamp Miami years and years ago. And he said he had a good experience, but he got a lot of negative comments and um, didn't feel welcome in that community. That's sad. I think that doesn't speak very well to the WordPress community. Is WordCamp Miami? That was, that's, you know. That's kind of mind blowing that we're such an inclusive community, unless you mention, unless you wear a Joomla shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the same thing happens. That's our one ism. And the same thing happens in Joomla, right? You know, you wear. Um, I was, I was at the uh, the Cloudfest conference in Germany, um, and Bulger was the sponsor. Um, Joomla was there. They had some volunteers there. I was on my free time was helping the Joomla project in some meetings and structure and stuff. And somebody wrote a blog post that was there as a Joomla volunteer saying. Oh well, my demo or treasurer wasn't even there helping Joomla. I'm like it was a bad thing. I'm like I was doing my day job. I was doing my day job, and I was spending my free time trying to support you. And it, it it's every project. Please don't think I'm just saying this is a WordPress issue. This is an open source issue. So, what what uh what areas are doing a good job of it? Like what? What? I mean, our, our, our web server is doing a good job of, of not competing and pushing together. I mean, where, where are you seeing this, this, this what, what communities are you seeing this work in, you know, where people aren't competitive? Or are you? I have to say, you can't really pick anything where it's not competitive. It's yeah, I mean, I, I can only point to specific examples of specific groups of people. Like the Community Leadership Summit is lots of open source projects coming together, but it's their leadership. And for the most part, the leadership is pretty, is, you know, cross communicates quite a bit. 
you know, I know the president of Joomla talks to the president, you know, of the Drupal Association and Concrete Five and all that stuff, and with Matt and all that, talking about what's working for you guys, things like that. It's just, it's the people that have dedicated their lives because they feel threatened when another project comes in. They feel like their livelihood is at risk. Their market share is going down. You know, I've devoted my life to WordPress, and I'm going to be screwed if WordPress dies. But guess what? Everything kind of works out for a reason. Um, ASP Classic. The average hourly rate for an ASP Classic developer is over a thousand an hour. Because nobody knows it. And there are still a very small subset of users that use that. There is a correlation between how many clients there are and how many and what the rates are. Same thing's happening in the Juno community. So for those, the more clients we bring into the thing, the less you can be all charged. So we're flooding the market with that. Unless you differentiate yeah. yourself, and that's a marketing proposition. But as a whole, by flooding, by growing so quickly with the WordPress market share, we are essentially saturating ourselves with low cost providers. Because you get a whole, you get a larger spectrum. And you get more people. But you also got more people who are now providing services at lower prices. Correct. Yeah. That's where we all sort of had that moment of like, we all need to stop charging $500 for a website. Exactly. Yeah. Right, that was our conversation. Well, I tried to have that conversation with anybody who yeah. says I'm gonna be a web developer right off the front. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah, it's people, just don't do that. the word web developer has been misused. They're thinking like, you know, like, oh, I'm a web developer. I would say you're an integrator. You know how to install some plugins and do some CSS. Not discounting that, but yeah. um, people feel threatened and they like to feel part of a winning team and you know, the conversation in the Joomla community is, man, Joomla, there's no money left in Joomla. I know people that are making a lot of money in Joomla right now. I know a lot of people that are not making anything in Joomla. I know a lot of people that are making nothing in WordPress, too. I know a lot of people that are making a lot in WordPress. It, it, you know, good marketing and good services are always going to win out, no matter what. But I don't think we should throw other CMSs under the bus and other open source projects under the bus just because we happen to use a different tool. I have a question statement, maybe. Sure. Can I ask everyone? Yeah. Um, I actually personally haven't seen a lot of this. I've seen like maybe an occasion of like, oh, you're, you're using that or you haven't used it in a while. Uh, first, I want to say something out of the question. Like, actually, every Drupal person I've ever met, I'm not Drupal, but Joomla, Super friendly and nice. They are like super. We're very open. careful with who we introduce. You. Okay, maybe that's, a, <laughs> maybe that's a thing. But I, like, I haven't really seen like this stigma. Maybe it's because uh, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but like, like is the, 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 earlier, not, seen it? not to throw you under the door bus, but earlier today we had a conversation. Say, yeah, we had a conversation, and the first thing you did was sigh heavily and roll your eyes when we mentioned when we mentioned a different project. Yeah because I've been doing data entry in a horrible fashion for eight, six hours that should not be done that way. <laughs> no, I'm not even talking about Joomla, I'm talking about Magento. Oh, that's because of the upgrade merge problem. Yeah, and but it's, it's still a very valuable, like, I would still use it for certain edge cases. Sure, but what if somebody was ancillary to you in that room and happened to be a Magento core contributor? In all fairness, we Good were point. all talking about having actually used it, right? I mean, Correct. so you we're talking so about strengths and weaknesses. That was, that was the point. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you some weaknesses of WordPress, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, it's. I think it's okay to have a, a strength and weakness conversation, but we also have to think about who else is in the room. We have a code of conduct on how we... Well, how's that fair? Code of conduct doesn't say that we can't speak the truth, and if the truth is no. there is a deficiency there, there's I, deficiencies I'm in not WordPress talking. too, right? He's I mean, talking about treating people with respect. No, I understand. Which is a thing that you could do in a critical... You could say critical things that are yeah. respectful. I mean, I, I think it's very different than you can't be. Well, no, he, he phrased it there like, we got to watch who's in the room and we can't talk negative about it no, at all. That's, that's, that's not, not what he said. That's not what I said. Okay. What I was trying to say is, let's look at code of conduct as an example, right? is that there are certain phrases and stigmas that we that we don't have to tolerate in our community because it can make those people that, could, that uh, identify with those groups not feel welcome. Um, I agree that we want it to be inclusive. Correct. Like, I, don't I, want fully, I fully agree we can have conversations and talk about what works and what doesn't, and we should have frank conversations. But if the first thing that happens when somebody you know says another CMS is you sigh heavily and make a joke and and, you know, it, 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 that is a slippery slope to, Fair well, enough. that sucks. Now, is Joomla perfect? No. Is WordPress perfect? No. Is there a perfect open source project? Not. I think we can all help each other. I'm not saying you need to stay on eggshells and not say anything negative, 
um, or constructive about any project, I think we all should, we, could, we should all accept constructive criticism, constructive criticism better, no matter what project you're in. Agreed. So, I, if I misspoke or if I wasn't clear, I apologize. No, I just wanted so. to make sure I, well, I seen, it seemed like we were going down the road of don't talk bad at all, and that seems like, we're, that, then you're boxing yourself into never addressing the real issues of the yeah. problem, right? So, to James's point, he did go on after he made that, you know, disparaging comment earlier, and talk <laughs> and, and talk about it an actual thing about the upgrade path and what happened and seven, you know, an actual good constructive um, criticism. Yeah. Um, we lost weeks of work because we had to rebuild something from the yeah, jail that, that that just wouldn't work because of pl plugin authors decide they're not going to support another version, so they're like, or they're slow to support it. It took us like eight months to get. Yeah, we're gonna, we're going to see similar things with Gutenberg. There will yeah. be plugin developers that won't support it. And that is gonna, you know, give WordPress maybe a black eye to some people. Well, but look at like that. You ever read the upgrade guide for Laravel going from a point yeah. release to like five three to five four? It's yeah, like yeah. make sure that you modify your interface that's that your classes that are implementing this interface to avoid fatal errors when you upgrade. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, like that's the like the 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 upgrade guide could be like this is going to take a qualified advanced Laravel developer so two to three to hours fair, to work. Say, to be fair, right? In a Laravel situation, you're already going to be working with a qualified developer to begin with, instead of WordPress, whereas it's a one-click update and nobody has to know anything okay. about what's happening. And there. so, but then we can pros and cons that in terms of like WordPress's technical debt. That's because of the fact that we're unwilling to do that. Right, I understand, backwards, but backwards, actually, backwards, 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 there's definitely a ton of technical debt that we as a, that we all have to take on because of that design decision. And his, his yeah. compound yeah. interest at this point. <laughs> that we can have a productive conversation about and look at how other frameworks like Joomla is a lot more pushy on uh, yeah, moving. But they through. lose user base because of it. Right. That's Which is the other what side you, of that you, What do you think the average, how big of a hit does Joomla take taking a stance like that? I mean, <laughs> if, if we're 30% of the market and we go PHP 7 only, how many percentage points will we talk and losing? I mean, I'm not concerned about the percentage points, um, but... I can, um, I need to, a security just did a, most people aren't even on seven. Yeah, most sites aren't even on seven. Because they can't uh, upgrade or because they're just choosing not to because, because they can't afford it yet? Choosing is a strong word, but in most cases the host doesn't mandate it and then if the host doesn't mandate it, they leave it alone because if it's not focused on fix it. Security just released a security audit just this week that talked about the PHP version numbers. I would recommend checking that out for the most recent statistics. Um, but if we mandated PHP 7, we'd lose a whole bunch of people. Um, well, we wouldn't necessarily lose them, they just wouldn't be updating anymore, right? And that's correct, what I'm what then, pushing for is for them to yeah. build in an update mechanism that says, no, you can't have that update. Yeah. But yeah, so, fair enough. Can I can I fair challenge enough. what you just said, Dylan? Yeah. Do you mind? Uh, I don't know. Is, We're having a conversation. Is that um, I think that there are two kind of categories here that we have to worry about. If we say PHP seven one, or you're, yeah, yeah. you can't upgrade, which you know is something that I've advocated for. With this, we would, uh, you just said. Yeah, yeah. Um, plugins. I want to mandate right. a minimum PHP version required for this plugin. So then they install it and they hit that activate button. It fails gracefully. Right? That's literally where I'm at. We were talking about this earlier. In but um. There are a class of people who will not update WordPress, right? Correct. Who are at WordPress 4.5 and it works into who can, those people. I'm not trying to say who cares, but they literally don't matter in this discussion because they're not going to update. And then there's a class of people that has um, no idea what we're talking about right now. And I have, on a small scale of I'm trying to see if I can get, you know, 20% of my user base, which is, you know, 20 to 40,000 get these websites yeah. to upgrade. Um, most of the, my experience so far is, oh, PHP version's a thing, I can get faster and more secure. And, and they're asking about it, yeah. And yeah. then most people email their host, and they're like, yes, you click this button, right? Exactly. It, it's they, just some people have bad hosts. And, and, or whatever. Some, and some people should maybe switch to a managed WordPress host that sponsors WordCamps. Um, and uh, <laughs> I have no problem <laughs> telling them <laughs> that, um, no, like, they're, okay, so like Pressable is an example, because they're in the room, but like, I don't think that you're gonna be upset to hear that somebody's gone from like the world's like why are you on that server to SiteGround, yeah. right? Like they're good, they, look, they, yeah. they make a good product and they're good yeah. members of our community. But so I just want to kind of challenge that mentality yeah. of like, yes, there are an insane percentage of sites that are on a wrong version of PHP. Yeah. And but I think that we have an opportunity to educate people and like oh, even yeah. in cPanel, it's not that hard. No. Um and into the crossover between it, it also I'm sorry. Go ahead, I was here. 
Um, and I'm not saying we shouldn't mandate PHP 7. I'm just stating that every project needs to look at the pros and cons of every decision, because every decision does affect a large user base. Yes. Um, and we can look at examples in the marketplace on what other projects have done and see how it's affected them, and then weigh the pros and cons. Um, same thing happened when you know the, the customizer was coming out. A lot of people were against it. WordPress would just do a soft force. Yeah. Actually tell people they can't update to the next version, but not put anything in the next version that actually isn't backward compatible already. So basically give like four or five versions where they don't start using PHP 7 full on. That's, that's a boy who cried wolf situation though. You can't do that. It's that's not necessarily because it, for those who do Well, up, I do know, I do because know. Because if you end up having to go back and retreat, say you lose 30% of people automatically because you put this notice up and they can't update anymore and they're already starting to switch off and you see this massive trend to start, well then you can undo it. You haven't fixed the commit, huh? You already told them. Course course course. Course. I mean, you already told them. Not necessarily. Second, like, for I do know plugin developers that do detect for PHP 7. Um, oh, and it's not PHP 7, it doesn't want you to install it, even if they don't use anything that uses PHP 7, because yeah. they fundamentally believe that. That's, that's their decision. I have a question. Yes. The uh, second one from the left, what is that an icon for? So it's three and computer. Toilet yeah. or coffee? Yeah, these are our theories. It looks like oh, toilet. it could be a computer. I see, it's a tower. Yeah, it's a desktop. Oh, I don't see the Korean toilet. I was seeing it. I was thought maybe shower. shower. That's how oh, I see it now. Okay, yeah, I yeah, yeah, It's an elevate yeah. button, that's the, it lifts you up, right? Second <laughs> <laughs> story, that's all. <laughs> so, okay. uh, what about, like, the... Uh, from from what I understand or I've seen the last couple of days, maybe Joomla takes a well, we're doing an upgrade approach versus a safer. I'm not going to break the upgrade approach. Well, since I, Joomla three, they've had a backwards compatibility promise because they've made decisions. And I'm not trying to say this is not the pro Joomla topic. That's not my purpose here. My purpose is for us to just kind of think differently. And I think a lot of people in this room already are, but. We can also coach and help talk to and have these conversations, which is going to only help us. Well, if we don't come away from anything with this, but I, I do realize that we, everybody in this room is very guilty of the snarky remarks the second somebody mentions using something other than. I've, I've been guilty of it too. Yeah, so um, that's something to work on. So. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's very fair. Way to make me feel guilty at the end of my day. Actually, he glared, he, he glared at me through the entire thing. I thought he was like talking at me the whole time. So no, he like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 I wasn't specifically. Hey, you know what? Call me on my. Call me on my. Except James. <laughs> um, yes. Yes. Is that like a soft the thing on the your on your laptop? What? Is it rubbery? Can I oh, it's hard. It's a Lego thing. Can I see what it is? Awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, check this out. Are we good? Yeah. Hey, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I think the biggest six-person room ever. We sounded like 20. Head over to the best case.